Barakim Habarim. Welcome to Messianic Moment Ministries. I'm Stephen Bruck. You know who you are. And today is the seventh day of November now, 2023. Yeah, almost turkey time. Well, for those of you who aren't familiar with Yiddish, in the title today, the word Tsaurus means troubles or problems. And if you're old enough or competent enough to understand what I just had written, then you know what Tsaurus is like because life is full of Tsaurus. Hey, let's stop for a second. If you haven't already subscribed, please, on the website, there's a subscribe button in the right-hand margin there. Click on that. And here on YouTube, one of these icons, click, do the note, the bells, the notification, all that stuff. Like, <clears throat> excuse me, like these uh, messages, please. Also, and join my Facebook group. It's called Just God's Word, but you got to make sure you click and agree to the rules or I can't let you post on it. And if you like what you get here, you'll also like the books I've written. I've written four of them and I'm working on a fifth. So you can get these books, either the links on the website or just go to Amazon.com, put in Stephen R. Brook, and they'll show you all the books. They're available in paperback and Kindle. All right, let's go back to today's message. So, despite how much Tsaurus we have to live with, we can look forward to the afterlife. At least, I believe in the afterlife, which <laughs> it's only natural since I believe in God and that Yeshua is the Messiah God promised to send throughout the Tanakh. And it's through <clears throat> that sacrificial death that Yeshua underwent that makes it possible for us to receive forgiveness of our sins. I mean... There's no salvation without forgiveness. Prior to him, the way we receive forgiveness was to sacrifice an animal where God placed his name, which was the temple in Jerusalem. Well, <clears throat> as you know, that temple was destroyed in 73 AD. So now, the only way to receive forgiveness is by means of the sacrifice Yeshua made on our behalf. I know, <clears throat> you may be thinking, well, wait a minute, Steve, the Bible says no one who loves the Lord has ever gone hungry or not had a place to sleep. That's Psalm 37, 25. Well, let's get real, people. Uh, lovers of God are suffering every day all over the world, especially in third world countries. And many are going with little or no food for periods of days and sleeping in the street. Does that mean the Bible lied? I don't think so. I think the Bible was talking in general terms. You see, <clears throat> one of the problems people have with understanding God, which is only done through understanding the Bible, is that we are mortal. We, we think in finite terms, and to us, this, this physical plane of existence, that felt good, this physical plane of existence is all we can relate to. Eternity sounds nice, but to truly relate and understand what it is, well, I mean, that's like trying to picture one million people standing on each other's shoulders. Can't be done. God, on the other hand, doesn't think in finite terms because, well, he's not mortal. God sees everything from an eternal viewpoint, existing on a spiritual plane that is just so far above our mortal existence that even though he knows and understands the physical, I mean, being omniscient helps, not to mention he created the universe. He's always thinking on an eternal level. <clears throat> what I'm saying is that even if we have to go hungry or not have a roof over our heads once in a while, while we are alive, those who love the Lord will enter eternity in his presence and never again have that problem, the fulfillment of that psalm. We need to remember that this existence here, this is only temporary, but the afterlife, that's forever. Think of it this way. When we're expecting something, time seems to go at a snail's pace. But when we look back on our lives, things that have happened are at warp speed. But after we have been resurrected with the Messiah and on the new earth, under our own tree, enjoying our own wine, we will look back and, you know, if we remember anything at all, it will seem to have happened in the blink of an eye. So, no, take solace in the fact that when you are having Taurus, as we all will more than once during our lives, it is only temporary. It will suck while you're going through it, but go through it, you will. And so long as you maintain your faith and persevere, 
When you are with the Lord, oh, things will be great. The rewards for accepting Yeshua as your Messiah and spending your life obeying God's instructions, it's the ones he gave in the Torah, as, as best as you can, well, I'll tell you, it'll be more joyful and peaceful than you could ever imagine. Well, that's it for today. So, I look forward to any comments you may have, and we'll end with Lehitrot and Baruch Hashem.